Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here on March 25th to talk about March 26th, um, LCK, LCK and LPL playoffs uh, slate. Unfortunately, DraftKings just wants to have one day slates, it looks like. So we're just going to have to deal with uh, two game slates from now on, I think, um, unless DK changes their mind. Um, so yeah, so tonight, we have a LCK playoff game. Uh, their number one seed, T1 versus Guangdong Freaks. Um, T1 is a huge favorite. I haven't even checked the Vegas odds yet, um, but I, I will. Um, I'm sure they're like probably at least minus 500. So let's check that out real quick. Um, but yeah, like I said, I mean, T1 should win this one easily. Oh, minus 2,000. Sorry. <laughs> I was underestimating the odds. Um, so yeah, T1, number one, Guangdong Freaks. I know they had just beat the RX in a best of five, three to two, I believe. Um, they had a very hard fought win in that series. And they didn't, they don't, first of all, they don't really have that much time to prep for T1 um, because they really didn't know who they were going to play between T1 or Genji because it was up to T1. Um, to you know, T1 as the number one seed, they got to choose the winners of the losers bracket between Damwon Kia and Katie uh, Guangdong Freaks. And T1, after Guangdong Freaks went over DRX, they chose KDF because they don't want to play Damwon Kia in the semifinals, I'm sure, um, with Canyon and Showmaker there. So, yeah, I think T1 is playing against Guangdong Freaks, who is much, much uh, inferior to T1, in my opinion, in every single lane. I think the only chance that Guangdong Freaks may have is in the top lane with Keen over um, Zeus. Zeus. Um, but yeah, so this is the roster right here, as you can see on the screen. I mean, Zeus, owner, Faker, Kumayushi, and Karia. And as you know, T1 went undefeated in, this, in the regular season. They were helped by um, some COVID cases and other teams. Um, but at the end of the day, T1 played really, really well uh, throughout the entire split. And it's really, really hard to finish, difficult to finish um, undefeated like that um, throughout the entire split. So, yeah, I mean, they were, they, they're focused. They are playing really well, especially um, I think Caria, who won the MVP for the regular season in the support position. So I think in the bottom lane, I think um, Gumayushi and Kiri is the bottom, probably the best bottom duo in the LCK, maybe not, if not in the world. So I think they're going to give a hard time uh, against Guangdong Freaks, Teddy and Hoyt. I know Teddy and Hoyt have been playing pretty well too, but I just feel like at the end of the day, Kiri is, is a different animal. He's on a different level right now. Um, so I like him, that advantage in the bottom lane. And like I said, I think Keen, in the top lane for Guangdong Freaks is the only chance, I think, that they can win through, in my opinion. I think, but then I think Zeus play has been playing really, really well the last couple of weeks for T1. So I don't think that's a, that's, you know, it's that much of a weakness point, in my opinion. So I think at the end of the day, it's a best of five series. So the better team's going to win overall. I think T1 will take care of business, but on a two game slate like this, slate like this for DFS purposes, we also have to kind of predict as to what the, um, you know, uh, the series outcome would be, whether it's two, th uh, three, zero or three, one or three to two, um, because that really affects like the point outcome. Um, because if you went, if you went three, zero and the other matchup in the two game slate is not bloody, then that definitely, you want to pick a team that finishes three and oh, because you will get um, games not played bonuses bonus points for those two games that you didn't play in the best of five series right so it really depends on the kill dynamics i think of those two games on the slate um, but in the in the lpl which i'll talk about in a little bit I, I fully expect that game to be more bloody than this one although t1 has been playing fast and Guangdong freaks has been playing uh, somewhat faster as well so i actually do think this is going to be somewhat more bloody than a standard lck matchup so I think for what it's worth, it's definitely worth to make the T1 long stack, in my opinion. I don't think I'm going to play any Guangdong Freak stack um, because I just I really don't think they have any chance, period. Unfortunately, that's the truth. Like even but even but for tomorrow's uh, um, 
playoff matchup in the LCK. I think Genji def- Jeff definitely is a favorite, but I think that one Kia has more of a shot at upsetting Genji. But I just feel like Guangdong Freaks has no chance against T1, in my opinion. Just looking at the metrics, looking at the eye test, just I'm, I'm, I'm an LCK fanatic more than an LPL uh, watcher. So I've been keeping up with all these teams, especially T1 and Guangdong Freaks um, with the with the late surge for Guangdong Freaks. I mean, but T1 is they're on a mission right now. They're not going to lose to this team. Um, maybe in the finals they could lose, but in the semifinals, I just do not see them losing here. All right, the LPL matchup, though. So this is the LPL uh, playoff bracket. So after last night's game between um, RNG and OMG, um, finally set here. So the first matchup is going to be between BLG and RA, which is going to happen tonight or tomorrow morning, if you speak, um, uh, so to speak, uh, for this slate that we're talking about. Um, So BLG, RA, which we'll analyze here shortly. And then on Sunday, it's going to be EDG versus FPX. And then you see other teams that are <clears throat> above them in the standings. They're just waiting for the winners of these matchups and, and see what happens there. So, yeah, let's see if they posted the route. Yeah, so this is the best of five. Um, if you guys, I don't know if you guys have heard, but Uzi is taking a break from the prof- professional uh, competitive scenes again. Um, he's not quite retiring, but he's taking a break. So I do not see foresee any substitution risk here between Doggo and Uzi. Doggo should play all five games if it goes to five games in a best of five series. So basically there is no substitution risk. So that's a key point um, if you were wondering about that. Um, and then for Rare Adam, I mean, the same five have been starting and then same for BLG. So regular five starters for each team respectively. Um, so let's dive into who I think will win. So just going going through the individual matchups though, let's go from you know top to bottom. Breathe against Cube. I think Breathe has been okay. Um, he was he's not the same type of uh, player he he used to be. I think last year and two years ago, Cube has been playing really really well. So I think it's more of a wash, but if not favor Cube in my opinion. So that goes a point for our rare Adam. And Weiwei has not that been that impressive either. So and Leanne has not been that impressive to me either. So jungle, I think, is the weakest position here, in my opinion, um, for both of these two teams, um, Weiwei and Leanne. But I think um, Leanne is slightly worse than Weiwei. So, but that's just my preference based on what I've watched thus far. This, this split, and then Fofo and Strive. I think that's a very very interesting matchup. I think that's where the um, game will be determined, at least in a few games in the series. I think Fofo has been lights out here and there. He's been a little more um, consistent, though, um, compared to Strive. Strive has shown that he can definitely um, carry a team as well, carry a game. Um, I can definitely see Strive uh, popping off in one of those games in the series, but uh, I have to give an edge to Fofo here by by slight uh, margins. And then Doggo versus Crisp. Sorry, I have to sneeze. Um, Doggo and Crisp versus iBoy and Yuyanja. I think Doggo is actually pretty. I think Doggo actually has been playing pretty well, in my opinion. It's unfortunate that he had to suffer playing time um, sacrifice playing time uh, because of Uzi on the same squad um, I actually think Doggo and Crips are crisp are not the issue for BLG I think it's more in the top lane and the jungle position I think but BLG's management obviously having signed Uzi for a very expensive uh, price tag during the offseason had to play Uzi you know when they started struggling a little bit or losing games rather so I understand that, but now it's the playoffs time. I think Doggo and Crisp are much better than Iboy and Yuanja, in my opinion. Um, Crisp it has been so-so. He's been inconsistent, but I really like Doggo over Iboy. Iboy and Yuanja have been playing pretty well, too, um, in their win streak uh, for Rare Adam. But I think, it's, it's, I think BLG has a little bit of edge over Rare Adam, just comparing the players in each lane. I do want to see here. 
what it looks like between these two teams on their in their match history. So BLG is a favorite at minus 227, so which I understand. Um, but BLG, like I said, have been a little bit inconsistent, uh, more inconsistent than Rare Adam in the match history, as you can tell. They've won three games, they've lost three, two, uh, four games, and then they've won the last two games. So let's look at who they beat in the last two games. They beat LGD, who's bad, and Ultra Prime, who's bad. Okay, so they took care of business against bad teams. And I believe one of them is done with Uzi. So, but that was a tough, hard fought uh, best of three series against Ultra Prime. And then they've lost to EDG, V5, FPX. T Tabi Sports. So those are obviously four teams that, in my opinion, are better than BLG. Uh, FPX, maybe not. Uh, we'll see, but definitely EDG, V5, and Top e Esports. EDG has been struggling too uh, lately, so maybe not, but Victory 5 and Top Esports have been really good overall, um, really great overall in the split. So I understand how they lost those games. And then they beat JDG, they beat W E K, the worst team in the LPL other than Thunder Talk. And then BLG beat AL, which is impressive. Um, JDG. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I think, like I said, I think it shows that they are so inconsistent. I mean, they've beat some good teams. They've lost against bad teams. Um, so let's look at Rare Adam, though. So when they were on a when they were on a streak, I mean, look at this: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven out of eight, uh, they won. Uh, and, you know, there was a stretch of seven out of eight games that they won. Um, they beat Weibo Gaming, impressive. Ultra Prime, okay. OMG, oh, all right. Um, they lost to OMG, but then they beat WEFPX. RNG is impressive, but they then these are all bottom teams. Thunder Talk, LGD, WE, and then they lost to OMG, and then they beat UP. So I, you know, I think those are bottom tier teams, I think, in my opinion. And then when they played against good teams like EDG, JDG, they lost two to zero. So I think... Rare Adam is more of like a gatekeeper team, probably. Um, at, at least that they're consistently um, in the place where they should be <laughs> between the good teams and the bad teams. So I think that that in itself is very fascinating to see. I do want to see one more thing here. Um, I do want to compare. maybe the jungle control percentage to see um, how they have been playing more recently. So six and nine and seven and four, Rare Adam has a better uh, match history on this latest patch. And Rare Adam has been lights out in jungle and lane and their wins, obviously. So let's look at the last two patches ago, um, 16 and eight, 16 and 15. So somewhat similar. And jungle rare Adam has been playing well too. So yeah, I think maybe Leanne has been playing better than I give him credit for. Um, rare Adam has superior stats. I do want to see the mid lane matchup here. Um, BLG versus rare Adam in the mid lane. Fofo and Strive. I do want to see the latest patch to see how they're doing. Fofo has definitely been more uh, involved in team fights and kill share uh, percentage. They, he's been dying less as well, um, even though CS per minute is lower than Strive. Damage per minute, Fofo has higher DPM and then DMG uh, damage percentage. Um, and then earned gold per minute, which is one of the biggest metrics, most important metrics that I see. Um, it favors Strive. Wow, it's a toss up. Um, and then two patches go. Let's see, kill participation, pretty similar, pretty similar. They're all very similar. But Strive is definitely better at CSing than Fofo. But Fofo does a lot more damage overall. But then earn gold per minute, it's about the same. But actually, Strive is 
higher. So yeah, that's that's very interesting because I was gonna I was leaning BLG, but then now I'm like back at square one, uh, square square one, square zero, uh, right in the middle um, between these two teams. Um, I think that's very interesting. Just based on the recent form, though, I feel like BLG should win with Doggo now, Perma starting in the AD carry position. Um, do they play in the regular season? Yeah, I'm sure they did. So I do want to see that. How that happened? BLG won two to zero. Did Doggo start? He did. Okay. That was game two, game one. So, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> first of all, before we choose a predict prediction, uh, make a prediction on the winner, look at the score here, 15 to 3 and then 10 to 7. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it, you would think like a regular B, uh, LPL game would outscore the – regular LCK game, but tonight I think it might be a little different. I mean, T1 and Guangdong Freaks, like I said earlier, it could turn out to be a bloodbath. I mean, not a bloodbath, but it could turn out to be a higher CKPM matchup than a standard LCK matchup. Whereas on the other, on the other hand, um, this rare Adam BLG game, both with lower combined kills per minute generally, um, I think can turn out to be another snooze fest like 10 to 7 and 15 to 3, which is not very good for DFS purposes, right? So so I think it really is. I think most people will try to long stack the winner of this LPL matchup, but I think there's some leverage there picking T1 um, as a long stack and then maybe pair up with both of the, these two teams as a short stack. I can definitely see that happening. Especially when T1 is gonna win through three to zero or three to one, at least get a gameplay bonus, games not play bonus. Whereas maybe this game will go to all game, you know, all five games. Um, but at the end of the day, it looks like Doggo played really well. Like I said, um, I boy did not play well. And then here, let's see what uh, the difference was here. Um, Doggo still played well. See, I'm a little worried about Weiwei versus Leanne. 10,000 gold, 10,000 gold. So they're about the same, even though they won 15 to 3. But obviously, Doggo's uh, gold accelerated over iBoys. And then Strive versus Fofo. Let's look at that real quick. And then I'll make a final prediction. They were about the same. Fofo had 11 assists in that first game. Fofo, 15,000. Strive, 13,000. Um, and it was only 10 to 7. Um, but it was... I'll go 16 over 13. 15 over 13. Curse, 14 over cube 11. But Wei Wei, about the same. As long as Wei Wei plays all right, I mean, I think as long as he doesn't feed Lian, which I mean, I can have, I can see that happening. Um, I think BLG should win. Um, BLG is such a frustrating team, though. Like they have a good squad on the on the paper, but they just been so inconsistent right so i think i can definitely see doggo carry a game or two in the series but then i can definitely see uh what's what's the jungle way way and breathe blow a game or two in the series uh, by making stupid mistakes um due to their inconsistency um but i do think having doggo not worry about Uzi and in, in, in this on his back. I think that will help Doggo play better. And Rare Adam, in my opinion, goes they go as I boy goes. Um, I do want to see one more thing. I just think it's a bad matchup um, for Rare Adam. I think I boy and Yuanja have to get going for Rare Adam to win. 
Um, so as long as Breathe and Weiwei do okay, I think I think Fofo and the so the bottom half of the map for BLG I think should take care of business. So at the end of the day, even though the um, metrics supported Rare Adam to uh, be better than BLGs, I still th I'm still thinking that BLG is going to end up winning this matchup. But like I said, I, since I'm not playing any Guangdong Freaks for GPP, I'm definitely going to have a share of both of these two teams, um, which can turn out to be bloody. But then I, I think the most of the metrics are showing me that um, the, the game, probably most of the games, three maybe at least three out of the five games, if they go to all five games, will be lower in kills than a standard LPL matchup. So I think that's very important to remember between... Uh, LCK matchup and the LPL matchup to make which one to make a make a long stack versus short stack. So yeah, just let me know if you guys have any additional questions on that. But given all of that, I, I do think BLG is going to win and T1 is going to win in their respective matchups. So I think I'm going to go BLG 3-2-2 two, two, and then T1 3-0. So I'll write that down. So that we have it on the records. T1 wins three to zero. BLG wins three to two. And a T1 match will be more bloody than a standard LCK matchup. BLG match will be less bloody than a standard LPL matchup. So, yeah. So I think those are interesting predictions that I'm making for what it's worth. Um, but if you guys have any questions or just want to talk league, let me know. And if you, uh, thanks for watching. If you like the video, hit the like button below. It would mean a lot to us. Um, and, and also hit the subscribe button if you're interested in watching videos about other sports. And given all of that, um, hope you guys have fun playing tonight. And if you guys um, have any other questions, let me know. Thank you. Bye-bye.